Hey, push new, push new. This time, uh, our video will be on um, trauma. Uh, that was a special request. And basically, it's part, it's, it's like my series on shortness of breath and my series, my two first series on dressing that I have a kid, <laughs> it became. And so that's why I thought it would be interesting. So somebody asked me a question on major burns. And I thought it would be great to put it in what I'll call major trauma. And this series, this part, so it will be, we'll call it trauma, but it will have two parts to it. So part A, part B. And the part A will be more on the approach of the trauma on their self, and not so much the approach of trauma, but the big, the big concern that we can have, and we talk about it a little bit in the respiratory, and we'll, we'll stick a little bit to the thoracic cages, and I did a whole series on the fractures and everything, we won't talk about that, but more the ones that can basically kill you, and what you can do to kind of prevent, and a little bit on self-reliance, can we do something about that? Uh, the second part, will be another big one and pretty much almost uh, entirely um, on burns. And the reason is not, we're not talking about, you know, you burn your tip of your, we're talking about major burn, like greater than 20% of your body. And uh, so like, you know, like you, you, something just exploded on you and everything. And uh, a lot of the dressing we carry can take care of about five to 6%. But when you're getting above this, you're, you're talking about a lot of fluids and stuff. So we'll talk a little bit about that as well as a few uh, things that the dressing that I'm going to use for burns also has been used for other stuff. So that's why I kind of got it all together. And hopefully you'll find that interesting. And we'll, won't talk much about, we'll mention that we won't talk much about fluid resuscitation, despite that it is an important concern in trauma because we're going to do another series on only fluid, uh, how to resuscitate uh, dehydrations and shock and we'll mention a little bit about shock and the different type of shock and when you and actually uh, should have a video as well on the flight nurse exam group uh, if you want to look at it I'll go again a little bit higher in details but I'll be talking about shock a little bit so let's talk about, start talking. So on the respiratory one, when we were talking about the uh, major injuries that can create shortness of breath, we were mentioning there was three big ones that could still kind of create uh, injuries. And um, and I added a fourth one there. And the uh, last one that we're going to talk about was uh, uh, pulmonary infusion. Okay, so that's what we're going to talk mostly about. Fracture, we talk about this pelvis instead of fracture, you can lose a lot of blood. But I'll, I'll um, talk about it. If you want to check my other videos on fracture and pelvis and how to fix it, I explain all the details. But it's just we can lose. So you can lose a lot of blood at three places. Um, your femur right over here, your pelvis right here can lose a lot of blood. Obviously, your belly can lose a lot of blood, and we'll actually probably do a special just on the belly, uh, on the different problems that we can have, and uh, why a foley can be useful for that. But we'll stick to the chest this time, because those are ones that you cannot really see. Not really losing a lot of blood. Uh, okay, so we're going to talk about those ones. Tamponade is not much you can do unless you're a trained professional, truly. So basically what tamponade is, is that, and we talk about cardiac tamponade, so between your heart, there's actually here we'll uh, use the uh, uh, sterilizer to, to show uh, what I'm talking about. So basically, you have a layer around your heart, and this would be your heart, and it's inside. And so as you can see, there's a layer between both. What happens is in tamponade is that blood accumulates in that between that two layers, and that your heart, your muscles 
because it's surrounded by that, that bag, it's compressed and compressed and compressed and then to a point that it cannot do any more of that compression. I cannot push the blood, so it cannot be used as a pump anymore, which is the main function of your heart. And so because it cannot do that, the blood doesn't circulate. Blood doesn't circulate, we're talking about oxygenation again. Uh, so tamponade can be a big one. But the problem is that if you go to a hospital, there are things we can do. Uh, there is tricks we can So unless you're a very healthcare, uh, healthcare trained person, very unlikely we'll be able to do anything about that. But if you are interesting and it is a big concern for whatever reason, then uh, I encourage you to read about it on the procedure because there is a procedure you could do in the field, but I'm not talking about it here because I would kind of almost cross this person because uh, even the procedure has his, his danger, the way you do it and if you don't do it properly and everything. So again, it goes against a little bit the philosophy that we were talking before of um, about uh, doing things that you know require low, um, high knowledge, low experience. But, but by learning things like, for example, dressings, if you do dressing versus uh, suture, so it's a little bit the same kind of category, so we'll talk, we won't talk about it a little bit more. Uh, those three, there's things you can do about it. This one, not much, but we'll still talk about it because there is a little something that you can do about it. And uh, we'll, talk, we'll talk about it. So, pneumothorax, hemothorax tension. So, have you noticed... Both of those words have thorax in it, and this is basically how most uh, medical um, names are: is that they have their uh, 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 so hypo, uh, like for example hypothermia, hyperthermia. So they have thermia meaning uh, temperature, and hypo and hyper means high or low. So here pneumo means that it's air, and emo means it's blood. And so basically, it's the same thing. But it's just the re how it works is different. So what happens is that when you have a pneumothorax is that basically you have a layer between the two lungs like this and it gets punctures. And as it gets punctured, either air can go in or blood can accumulate in that part. And what's going to happen is that it can compress your, your lungs and it will be harder to, to breathe so air won't be able to circulate because your lungs won't be able to inflate. Because again, we were talking about in the respiratory is that we work at, at a different level of uh, so we either decrease the, te the uh, pressure and then the pressure goes in. While if there's a valve or a big hole in it, the air can go between both places and then that exchange of, of, t of pressure doesn't happen. Can we do something about it? Yes. Um, Pneumothorax, you can do a dressing, three size only, not four size, because you don't want to go through what we're going to talk about it after, the tension pneumothorax, the three sides to drain for the pneumothorax. Hemothorax, there is blood. It is be harder to accumulate. There is other stuff we can do, and we're going to talk about it right there in the tension. But then again, it's going to be your own decision. I'm going to put a few links on the video if you want to read more about it. But there is maybe something we, you, you can do. So that's the hemothorax. So let's talk about the tension there, uh, pneumo. Tension pneumo, it's a little bit the same thing as pneumothorax, but that hole that it uh, communicate with the exterior do not exist. It's a foot, so basically, for example, you break one of your ribs, and your ribs puncture your lungs, but doesn't puncture the skin in between it. So basically now the air goes in. So what happens is that every time you breathe in, the air accumulates into your lungs. What you can do for that as a short-term uh, solution is to use one of those big needles. And what happens is that you create that area and that it can go in. And so that's why this thing can save life and that's why I do carry it. I'll let you read about the procedure, I'm not showing that here. But this is what you can do for tension pneumothorax. For tension and pneumothorax, the problem is that once you create that hole, and actually pneumothorax as well, is that once that hole is creating, the, the lungs can, so for more a self-reliance situation, things can be done on the longer term, it means that you need to put a chest tube in. 
Can it be improvised? Yes, I think so. You can improvise some chest too. But the problem is the procedure of it. Is it difficult? I don't think so. But it's still uh, a knowledge uh, which I'll let you um, discover on your own for that, um, for that procedure because uh, I want you to read about it and see, you know, if you want it or not and um, uh, how comfortable you are with doing it. Um, it's not a complicated procedure, but it is still a procedure with it and it has some um, pros and cons. Um, I think it would be able to improvise the way and, and the, the, the main thing that you want is any system that you're going to create, you want the air to go be able to go out. So basically, um, think about if you would have a glass of water and you put a straw in it. You put, when you put the air out, it makes the bu uh, bubbles because the air exchanges through the water and goes. But if you leave like this, there's no air going in. If you aspirate, it's water coming in. So there is old system and now like the new system are built up for that. But there is a system that you could build that could create that system, meaning that all the air that is in, as you're closing this hole, you're re you're trying to re-equilibrate those two pressure, the one from the outside, the one from the inside, as the person breathes in and breathes out. And what was happening is that if you create this, at one point the lungs will be able to uh, they're like tissues like anything you know like when you cut yourself so it's like a, a wound but on your lungs it will heal up slowly and then to a point that you'll be able to pull out the tube but do I recommend putting chest tube in everybody not really because I mean you can still there's a lot of stuff over there you need to know where you're going and how you're doing um, but if it is a procedure that you want to do I think in the self-reliance situation uh, for those uh, conditions, that would be a very uh, important uh, measure to, to learn, something to learn. On the pulmonary contusion, that one, um, I'm going to do another uh, video on, um, I'm just going to buy some uh, extra gear to and try and different systems. pressure. So pulmonary and expiratory pressure. What this peep means is that basically at the end of your thing, uh, of your, so when I expire my hair, there is still pressure in my lungs. And this is created by this uh, system because if, if not, everything would collapse. And just like if you ever want to try it, try to take a balloon and, and try to blow it take the air out and then blow it again. It takes a lot of energy to start it. But if you leave a little bit of air inside, it don't deflate it completely, we blow it and don't re deflate it, it stays in, it's easier to put air in. And so this is the concept of PEEP. Uh, so why are we talking about a contusion? Is basically a bruise, just like when you have a bruise on your, on your arms, so you know like that purplish stuff that you have, but now it's in your lungs. And so what happened is that it's more when you have what we call an acceleration or deceleration. So basically, for example, if I hit my thorax, my lungs are not uh, stiff in my, my thorax, they kind of move. So if my chest stops suddenly, the, it will do this, see like how, how it hits? Well, the lungs does that, and when they hit, they create this bruise, and so now you have a bruise in your lungs. The problem is that now all those alveoli and all those little bags that usually contain some oxygen, all they contain is dry blood or blood that is um, exploded from the capillaries. And so when you use PEEP, what it's going to create is that it's going to help pushing this blood away and be able to oxygenate. But we'll talk a little bit. So I just wanted to mention it in the trauma section because it is a condition that we need to read about and, and know about because they may happen. And especially, if, for example, in explosion, uh, explosions and stuff, which could be a very uh, self-reliance, you know, like you go and refill the propane tank or something and you, you're you tired and poof, this thing just explodes and then, or even just because of of the kind of disaster that you have, there's a lot of explosion, you can have a lot of pulmonary contusion. And if you have pulmonary contusion... So we're going to stop this video now, and then we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, dressings. So stay tuned for the next part.